good morning. It's Beth at Ruth Stitchery and RuthStitchery.com. And, you know, we're always looking for topics to talk about in our videos. And um, when we're thinking about those topics, we always like to um, grab on to the things that our customers are asking us about. And that gives us a great opportunity to uh, answer that, you know, those questions that we get asked quite a bit. And one of them that we are noticing that we get asked um, quite often is, how do you hang your quilts? Um, what do you hang them on? How do you prepare your quilt to be hung? And of course, there are a multitude of ways that you can hang your quilts if they're not gonna be on your bed and you specifically make a wall hanging that you want hanging on your wall. I personally love to use a curtain rod that I attach to my wall um, and I hang my quilts from it and then I just change them for the season. I don't have a ton of wall space in my house, but I do have kind of two designated places in my house that I have quilts hanging from curtain rods and I just change them out for the seasons. And um, the way that I then put it onto the um, curtain rod is you need to have some sort of sleeve on the back, something to attach to that curtain rod or if you're not using a curtain rod and you're using a wooden dowel, you know, anything that you're using to hang your quilt with, you gotta have something to put that into. So today we thought we would sort of share, you know, just a few ideas. There are a lot of others out there, I'm sure, but I'm gonna share with you a couple of ways that you can put a sleeve on your quilt and be able to hang it from a curtain rod, from a dowel, and, um, anything like that. So um, I brought a few examples to show you. One of them is um, to put a sleeve on the back and I will start with this one just because you can see it a little bit better. Um, so I'm gonna open up the back of this quilt and you can see this little green hound's tooth piece that goes across the top of my quilt is actually a sleeve. So you can see my fingers are going inside. It goes all the way across and I can slip a wooden dowel. I can put this on a skinnier curtain rod. Um, and I just used some leftover fabric from the front. So you can see that fabric is here on the front of my quilt. I had a little bit of that left over and decided to use that as the sleeve on here. Um, so that is one way is just use some leftover fabrics that are on the front of your quilt. So if you have end up having a lot of backing fabric, which I do all the time, <laughs> I have lots of backing fabric. Um, the other way, it's a little bit harder to see, but I match my sleeve to the backing. So I just use whatever leftover backing fabric I have and I can put th this on the back of my, my quilt. So there's a little sleeve. I know it's hard to see, but I guess if I can stick my little fingers in there, you can see. So that's where I would slip this onto a curtain rod, a wooden dowel, something like that. Okay, the other way that you can do that is just by having maybe some little tabs on the back. So I brought this little wall hanging because this one I decided not to put a little sleeve on, but I put little ribbon tabs on here. So actually the, this hangs on um, a little wooden dowel at Christmas in my house and then I think I might just have some little command strips that uh, that hang actually behind these and the wooden dowel goes through it so you can't see the command strips all you can see is the tabs um, hanging up so I use like a um, burlap ribbon for this but you certainly could use fabric tabs as well they could hang up above your quilt like this, or if you had some fabric tabs, you could actually tack those down on the back and the dowel could go through here. Certainly if you had a larger quilt, you would need 
uh, several more tabs that went across. Two would not work if this was a heavier quilt. But So you could, instead of a full sleeve, you could put little tabs on the back of your quilt to, to be able to hang it. Another popular way to um, hang your quilts that I don't think I saw this done, it's probably been about two, three, maybe four years was the first time I saw this, but how clever. Um, and that is by just putting some little corner tabs. This reminds me of, um, this is really gonna age me, the pictures in the old photo album that just had the little corner tabs and you stuck your little pictures in them, your little Polaroid shots that stuck in the little corners. Um, that's basically the same concept is so you've got these little pieces of um, corner uh, triangles that are in each of the four corners um, and then you can see that she has also put a little sleeve uh, also so she's got kind of multiple ways I'm trying to get under here oh actually that's not a sleeve oh yes it is it's over here <laughs> There's a little opening right here. Um, and so she's got one of those on each side. And what is fantastic about that is you can take a wooden dowel, get it cut the exact size of each side of this quilt or of your quilt, and you can stick the little wooden dowel all the way around. And then this quilt would hang perfectly straight. And you could still use nails or command strips to hang that up on the wall and it wouldn't be super flimsy because you'd have a wooden dowel that went all the way around it, almost making like a picture frame on the back of your quilt. Um, but you wouldn't need to put them on all sides. You could very easily just stick that wooden dowel into these little corner pockets, you know, put a couple little nails and it could hang on that. You wouldn't see the dowel, it would be behind. So that's another um, way to hang your quilt that's become quite popular. It doesn't take a whole lot of fabric to do those little corner pockets. Um, and so I think it's quite clever. I've not personally done that, but I feel like maybe I need to. I've got to step up my game a little bit and see what I can do for that. So the next question we get was, okay, yeah, I need a sleeve, but how do I put it onto my quilt? How do I get it on there? So I brought a quilt that I have not bound yet, which I absolutely love. I gotta get this thing bound. Um, so what I like to do is, and this is only if I have pre-planned, I know I, you know, once I make this quilt, if I know I want to be hanging it, um, and I've done some pre-thought, then I know I'm gonna put a sleeve on before, um, it, with my binding, okay? So I typically, on this case, I had lots of backing left over. Um, usually I cut about a six inch strip off the backing and I piece it together if my quilt is a lot longer, this one was not. But basically I measure the width of my quilt and then I take off about two inches. So two inches for, or an inch for each side that I will then kind of center on here. So I would figure out what the width of this was, minus two inches, and that's how long I would cut this strip. Um, so it's a little bit longer right now. But I would get this cut to the size. First thing I do is I basically put a little hem on each side of this strip. So I would fold this over once, fold it over again, give it a nice clean finished edge, and I would just do a top stitch to hold that in place. I would repeat that on the other side, just so I didn't have an unfinished edge. I would fold that over once, fold that over again, do a little top stitch. So I do the ends first, then I would just fold this wrong sides together Give it a really good press so it's going to lay flat like this. Remember these edges are finished so I'm going to have basically about a three inch uh, sleeve uh, width there. And then I make sure that I take 
the raw edges. So here's the raw edges of my um, sleeve. And I'm gonna pin that, center it on the back, and I'm gonna pin that across the top of my quilt. And I'm gonna put pins all the way across. And this I do before I bind my quilt. That way, when I go to bind this, the top part of that sleeve is gonna get sewn into my binding. Um, and that way, that reason, I only have one side that I'll have to hand stitch down. So I'm gonna get this pinned across the top. Once I have that in place and I get my binding strip ready to go, then I will go ahead and stitch my binding on, uh, depending on whether I am going to be machine stitching my binding down completely um, or hand stitching on the back certainly is going to determine whether I stitch my binding onto the back first or the front. doesn't really matter for the sleeve, but I get the binding stitched on and this gets stitched into my binding. So you can kind of see that on here that the top of my sleeve was stitched into the binding um, on here. Once I've got my binding on and totally finished, then I just come back and I will whip stitch the bottom part of this um, sleeve all the way across. So I do that by hand just trying to catch the backing part. You're not going all the way through your quilt, you're just catching the backing. And I can just do a quick whip stitch across because when this is hanging, the weight is not hitting the bottom part of that sleeve, it's hitting at the top. So this doesn't need to be super, super secure across the bottom, it just needs secure enough to hold the sleeve in place. So that is how I typically would put a sleeve into my quilt. Now, if I've made a quilt and I bind it, and originally I never thought I would hang the quilt, and then down the road I realized, no, I really wanna hang that in my living room, um, I can still attach a sleeve. I can go ahead and make um, this. If I were doing it that way, I would probably just go ahead and prepare it exactly like I said to start with. I would sort of hem these two edges that I would still fold it right sides together. And then I would stitch this quarter inch all the way all the way down. And then I would refold this so that actually my stitched seam is behind. So you can't see it. And so this would still be a solid piece uh, like this. And then the only difference is now I've got to hand stitch both sides down. Um, and so if that's the case, remember the weight really hits the top part of your sleeve and so I would be a little bit more um, closer together on my stitches, um, but then I would just hand stitch this down, catching the backing, and I would just have to do it on the top and the bottom. So you can certainly add a sleeve after the fact. Um, I'm showing you where you make your own out of your own fabric. But I do know that they um, make packages of pre-made sleeves that you can kind of add to, uh, to the back of your quilt if you would like to do it that way. But you know, I don't know about you, but I tend to always have my backings way bigger than they need to be. So I end up with a lot of extra fabric that might get just thrown into a pile and maybe I don't know what I want to do with it. So uh, using it as part of your sleeve makes perfect sense. I hope this answered some of your questions about hanging quilts, how to get a sleeve on the back of your quilt. Um, we love it when customers, um, you know, are, ask us for advice. We love to share our knowledge. We love to hear and learn from you guys. So if you have other ways that you put a sleeve on or that you hang your quilts, we would love to hear it. And don't forget to share our videos and thanks for watching.